Every time someone talks about pyramids, people always envision the Great Pyramids of Egypt, with some exceptions for the Aztec pyramids in South America. And the same thing happens when talking about the River Nile. It feels like pyramids, Nile and Egypt are all synonyms, but did you know that if you follow this magical river upstream, you'll find a country with more pyramids than Egypt itself? Yes, you heard me right. Sudan was once home to the Kingdom of Kush, a rival to Egypt that embraced its neighbor's culture and beliefs. The city of Meroe became its capital, where over 30 kings were buried amid 220 pyramids. In comparison, there are only 118 pyramids in all of Egypt. The tale of its rise and fall, its slender pyramids and ambitious rulers is a fascinating history that began over 5000 years ago. There are still disputes between the two countries that claim that their ancestors were the first pyramid craftsmen, but the history changes depending on who you speak with. The Sudanese Minister of Information, Hamed Bilal Hodman, claimed that the Miri pyramids of Sudan are 2000 years older than the Egypt's pyramids and that the Sudanese government is now working to prove this to the entire world. These claims stirred up outrage among Egyptians, particularly history experts. Zahi Hawass, the former minister of antiquities, said the Egyptian pyramids are the oldest, especially the Pyramid of Djoser, which dates back more than 5000 years. For a period of 200 years, around 3000 BC, Egyptian pharaohs sent their armies south along the Nile in search of gold, granite for statues, ostrich feathers and slaves. They built forts and later temples to demonstrate their dominance over the local population. The Nubian were the early inhabitants of the central Nile Valley, present-day northern Sudan and southern Egypt, and believed to be one of the earliest cradles of civilization. The conquered region came to be known as the Kingdom of Kush, with the Kushites adopting all aspects of Egyptian culture from gods to glyphs. They embraced it to such a degree that when the Egyptian Empire collapsed in 1070 BC, the Nubian dynasty, led by Alara, king of the Kush, spearheaded a renaissance of Egyptian culture, including the construction of their own pyramids. With the Nubian dynasty flourishing militarily and economically, and believing themselves to be the true sons of Egyptian god Amun, they invaded their neighbors to the north. Alara's grandson, Pai, moved into Egypt to rebuild the great temples, extending his control to the whole Nile Valley, from Libya to Palestine, and down to what is now modern-day Khartoum. Pai became the first pharaoh of Egypt's 25th dynasty, and for nearly 100 years, Egypt was ruled by leaders now dubbed the Black Pharaohs. Pai died in 715 BC, having reigned for 35 years. Although he returned to Nubia after conquering Egypt, he wished to be buried in Egyptian style, a request his subjects granted. Entombed in a pyramid, Pai was the first pharaoh in more than 500 years to be buried this way. The reign of the 25th dynasty and the black pharaohs ended in turmoil, when a Syrian invasion of Egypt caused it to fall from power. The victors struck the names of the 25th dynasty from monuments across Egypt, destroying their statues and monuments to erase their names from history. After the Nubian pharaohs lost power, they retreated south to the city of Meroe, which sits along the Nile and became the new capital. This new location was not only strategically positioned at the crossroads of inland Africa trade routes and caravan trails from the Red Sea, but also blessed with significant natural resources, iron and gold mines that fostered the development of metal industry, especially gold work. Meroe became the large greatest burial site of Kush's royal pharaohs. Because of Mary's distance from Cairo, the Kushites were able to retain their independence, developing their own vibrant hybrid of Egyptian culture and religion, until well into the 4th century. The Meroids built temples, palaces and royal baths in their capital, but their greatest achievement were the more than 200 tall, slender pyramids built at the necropolis at Meroe, giving Sudan more pyramids than all of Egypt combined. Some of the most impressive tombs here are the final resting places of 30 kings, 8 queens and 3 princes. 
Although less famous than the grouping of pyramids at Giza in Egypt, the complex at Meroe in Sudan is remarkable. The pyramids, primarily dating from 300 BC to 350 CE, mark the tombs of royalty of the Kingdom of Kush. They are recognized at UNESCO World Heritage Site, yet they remain relatively undervisited. The Nubian pyramids differ from Egyptian ones in that they are smaller, 6 to 27 meters on a side, compared with the Great Pyramid's 230 meters, which is much steeper sides. While the ancient Egyptians largely abandoned pyramids for hidden tombs, the Nubians continued to use pyramids, with most of them being built 2000 years after those at Giza. The tallest pyramid was believed to be 40 meters high, but unfortunately, most of them have been destroyed by European explorers, the most famous of which was Italian tomb raider Giuseppe Ferlini. But even before then, it is believed that more than 1,100 pyramids were built all around Sudan, with shiny pointy tips made out of gold, despite none of them being found. Over the centuries, rumors spread of Mary's monuments and the gold they contained, so eventually, in 1834, Ferlini arrived in Mary, where he set about looting the graves, which had been found in good conditions by Frédéric Callieu just a few years earlier. Overall, he is considered responsible for the destruction of over 40 pyramids, damage still lamented by archaeologists. Having found the treasure he was looking for in 1836, Ferlini returned home. A year later, he wrote a report of his expedition containing a catalogue of its findings, which was translated to French and republished in 1838. He tried to sell the treasure, but at this time, nobody believed that such high-quality jewellery could be made in sub-Saharan Africa. The treasures were finally sold in Germany. Part were purchased by King Ludwig I of Bavaria and are now in the State Museum of Egyptian Art of Munich, while the remaining, under suggestions of Karl Richard Lepsius and of Christian Charles, was bought by the Egyptian Museum of Berlin, where it still is. Another amazing complex in the country are the pyramids of Nuri. These tombs in northern Sudan are home to the pharaoh Nastan and due to underground water rises that have made access to these wonders extremely hard, they have stayed untouched from greedy explorers. Recent excavations have marked the first instance of underwater archaeology below a pyramid. Many of these tombs have been undisturbed for more than 2000 years. The Kushites also made these pyramids in the 25th dynasty. But the main difference between them and the Nubian and Egyptian ones is that tombs were built under them, not inside. So far, the excavation team has found golden leaves, figurines and clay pottery, but the complete exploration might take decades. By 300 CE, the Kingdom of Kush was in decline. Dwindling agriculture and increasing raids from Ethiopia and Rome spelled the end of their rule. Christianity and Islam followed soon, and prayers to Egyptian god Amun faded from memory. And the rest? Well, the rest is history. Unfortunately, due to civil war and western sanctions, Sudan gets merely a few thousand visitors per year, and the pyramids get even less. There are no guided visits, protection around the facilities, and villagers only go near them to get water from the pit. If you are like me and love the mystery around the numerous pyramids around the globe, make sure to check my video on the hidden Chinese pyramids that have been found in 1912 by American traders, but have been kept as a secret by the Chinese government ever since. This is also the same location where the famous Terracotta army had been found. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a like if you learned something new. Obrigado.